Hello everyone. Have you ever wondered how accurate your homebrew numbers are? Well, in this video, thanks to Brew Lab and the UK National Home Brewing Competition, we're going to find out, at least for one of my beers anyway. So one of my prizes from the UK National last year was a full chemical analysis of one of my beers by Brew Lab, who provides lab services and much more to the UK brewing industry. I decided to send them a rebrew of the beer that actually won me that prize in the competition so that they could tell me the actual OG, FG, ABV, PH, EBC and IBU figures. So obviously this is only going to be based on a single brew that I've done and isn't going to prove anything conclusively apart from this particular beer, but it might give us some sort of idea of the type of margin for error that we might be looking at when we are measuring these figures or calculating these figures on our own beers uh, using homebrew equipment. Just before we get into that, if you do enjoy the video, please remember to like, comment and subscribe. And remember, you can follow me on the socials that are on the screen now. So let's look at the numbers that I came up with for this beer. So according to my measurements, I had an original gravity of 1054, a final gravity of 1011, giving an ABV of 5.6%, an EBC colour calculated by Brewfather of 6.7, and IBUs calculated by Brewfather of 34. I didn't measure the final pH of the beer because that's not something that I generally concern myself with at the moment, but we will talk about that in more detail as it's part of this uh, analysis by Brew Lab. Now let's look at the numbers that came back from the lab. So the original gravity, which presumably Brew Lab kind of work back to from the final gravity and the ABV that they measure, was given as 1056.61. So that was 2.6 points higher than what I had measured. And that could be potentially down to a number of things. So might just be me misreading the hydrometer. It might be the hydrometer not being calibrated perfectly. It might be a temperature differential in the work when I measured it. The work maybe not being fully mixed and homogenous or maybe a combination of all of those things in some way. The final gravity came in at 1010.36 according to Brew Lab, and that was only 0.64 lower than what I had measured it. I suspect that maybe that small difference may have come from the beer just fermenting a little bit more during the lagering phase, assuming that my first measurement before that at 1011 was actually accurate. Obviously, again, it's such a small difference that could just be the difference in me reading it slightly higher on the line than it was. So obviously as a result of the higher original gravity and the lower finishing gravity, the ABV was a bit higher as well. So that came out at 6.03%, which was 0.43 ABV higher than what I had calculated at. If that kind of difference is typical of a lot of my beers, it might explain a few situations over the years. So when I'm actually measuring gravities for my beers, I do use two different hydrometers. So I've got a hydrometer that I use for the original gravity, which has a slightly um, larger scale on it, and then a smaller scaled finishing gravity hydrometer that just makes it a little bit easier to read what those numbers are. It may be the case that differences in calibration between the two of those hydrometers is a contributing factor here, because if you use a single hydrometer, even if the measured values are not absolutely correct, the differential between them should still give you a relatively accurate reading on ABV or calculation for the ABV at the end. That said, to do that, you generally need a larger scale hydrometer and by their nature, the resolution on those is gonna be a little bit lower and therefore more difficult to read accurately and get correct readings in the first place. So that can obviously lead to inaccuracy as well. Either way, considering that even commercial breweries have a tolerance of plus or minus 0.5% ABV on beers up to 5.5% and a whole 1% tolerance on beers above 5.5%, I think my uh, slight difference there of 0.43 isn't really that bad considering it's on a homebrew scale using homebrew equipment. 
So I probably will double check the calibration on those hydrometers as a result of this and maybe use my refractometer to confirm the original gravity a bit more regularly as well. But to be honest, half a percent here or there is not really a massive concern for me. One other thing I could do is also to delay taking the final gravity until I finished, particularly with lagers, the kind of lagering or conditioning phase for that beer to make sure that any you know, final attenuation that happens during that phase is also measured when I take that reading. But realistically, I'm probably not gonna bother with that either, to be honest, so uh, we'll see. So for the pH, as I said, I didn't measure this figure myself, but it is worth mentioning in terms of why brewers might want this information in a chemical analysis of their beer. Now there is quite a range of numbers that you can find for what people suggest is a typical finishing pH for beers, but the general consensus on the majority of sources that I found suggested that 4.2 to 4.6 is common for lagers, uh, and for ales, especially with adjuncts, the average will be a bit lower from 4 to 4.4, but obviously there's various different styles that will fall outside of that. The obvious one being, you know, sour beers, for example, which will be much lower. There's also a caveat that um, modern heavily dry hopped beers like Nipahs and so on will push the pH value up a little bit higher because of the effect that that uh, fairly heavy late hopping will have on the beer as well. So if we have pH values which are significantly lower than those kind of typical ranges, it can be an indication for brewers that there may be some kind of uh, spoilage going on in terms of microorganisms or wild yeasts or whatever which are uh, effectively souring the beer which obviously is something they want to avoid. On the flip side of that, a higher pH can actually mean that the beer is potentially more vulnerable to infection further down the line. It can also have a dulling effect on the flavour and potentially leave some kind of harsh, slightly astringent bitterness um, on the beer as well. So again, one to avoid, generally speaking. So my beer fell at 4.44 pH, which is in the good range for lagers there. And according to uh, Brew Your Own website, that's right on the cusp of the optimal range for faster beer maturation, including uptake of diacetyl, better beer clarity, better biological stability, and a more refined beer taste, apparently. So it is unusual to adjust pH post-fermentation. Normally, it should fall into that kind of happy range by default, as long as you have managed the pH correctly during the brewing process or earlier in the brewing process, and you've had a healthy and successful fermentation of the beer. That said, it might be something that I have a little play around with for lagers particularly to see what the results are if I try and drop that pH down to say 4.1 or 4.2, because there seems to be quite a bit of information out there which suggests that might lend you a slightly more crisp kind of cleaner uh, finish on the beer. Um, so that will be interesting to see if we can create that by adjusting the pH. So looking at the color next, Brewfather calculated an EBC of 6.9, whereas the lab measurement came out to 8.73, which was a difference of 1.83 EBC. Now that might sound like a lot, but it's actually a really subtle difference in terms of color. And it's something that could easily be accounted for with just natural variations. Um, in the malt and the final color that that's come out at. The base malt I use, for example, has a stated EBC range between three and five. So you could potentially have a swing of two EBC just from the base malt. And looking back at the recipe as I set it up on Brewfather, I actually had the EBC set to 2.5. So you'll see that if we just bump that up to uh, four, so put it in the middle of the range, it actually brings the calculated color really pretty close to what was measured by the lab. So it seems like the color calculation can be very accurate as long as you actually enter all of the numbers in correctly in the first place. Finally, we come on to bitterness. So Brewfather calculated a value of 34 IBUs. The lab measured it at 22.16 EBUs, a difference of nearly 12 units. So by the way, EBUs and IBUs are essentially can be used interchangeably, they are equivalent. While that is a fairly 
big disparity. It was probably one of the numbers that I was least surprised at. And that's because of, you know, lots of information being out there about how inaccurate, essentially, IBU calculations can be. And I've certainly seen lots of experiments or articles online where beers have been measured, including commercial beers, and there's been quite a big difference between what the expected IBUs or the calculated IBUs were versus what was measured in the lab, similar to what has happened here. These differences can be attributed in large part to the huge amount of variables that go into hop utilisation from the hops themselves down to different breweries and how they construct their recipes and their brewing processes and so on and so forth. Everywhere is going to be different and everywhere is probably going to need really a kind of bespoke IBU calculation if they're going to get something that's going to be accurate for them. For what it's worth, the formula in Brewfather that actually yielded the closest calculation to the IBUs measured in the lab was the Garrett's formula. So will I be switching over to that? No. And the reason being, essentially, my perception of IBUs is kind of calibrated to the results that are given with the Tintsef formula, which is the default one in Brewfather. And that's how I kind of measure in my head where those IBUs are going to be. So whether or not the figures are completely accurate, to my mind, that's what a 34 IBU beer tastes like. And therefore, for recipe formulation, all the rest of it, it's going to be easier for me just to kind of leave that where it is. So I kind of know what I'm going to be expecting with beers at a certain number of IBUs, according to that calculation anyway. As I said, this is also the kind of default formula that's used in Brewfather and a lot of other software as well. So for the purpose of comparing, adapting and using other people's recipes and sharing my own recipes, it just saves a lot of headaches if I stick with the Tintsef formula essentially. So to sum up in this case, we can say that a lot of the calculations and measurements that we make at a homebrew level can potentially have a fairly big margin of error, but there shouldn't really be any major issues with that as long as we factor that into our kind of recipe design and we have an idea of where those numbers are going to land in terms of the actual outcome or perception of the beer at the end of the process. It's interesting to note with this beer as an example that even though some of those numbers were missed by what looked like quite a wide margin, the beer still fell within the style guideline numbers for the Heller's export beer. And in some cases, it actually pushed the numbers more into style than where they were. So again, it's not like it's changed the beer to a completely different style or moved it out of that range. So definitely some food for thought there, but I think overall the old adage, relax, don't worry, have a homebrew, definitely applies in this case. So cheers, everyone. Let me know your thoughts in the comments and I'll see you on the next video. I'm the dude. So that's what you call me, you know, uh, that or uh, his dudeness or uh, duder or, uh, you know, El Duderino, if you're not into the whole brevity thing.